Well, hello there, my beautiful friends. Today we're talking about Conva.js again, and this video is in response to a viewer question. Uh, he asks how you can have the user sort of create shapes using the mouse and then perhaps edit them, sort of dragging them around and adjusting maybe the width and height of a rectangle, for example, using the mouse, and it's a very good question. And let's look at that today. Okay, so on the left side of our screen, my friends, we have basic bare bones HTML5 web page as we had in previous videos. If you've been watching my little tutorial series, you know what we're doing here. We got the Conva library, of course, installed up in our head tag. In our body tag, we have a div. Of course, it could be anything. I've given it a, an ID of Conva holder. And below that, we're opening up a script tag here, and I'm just going to script at the bottom of our body tag for demonstration purposes. You'd probably, if this were actual production code, you'd want this in another external uh, script, but this will work fine for here. Okay, great, wonderful. At the very top of our code, I do a lot with the console log business, so I have a little uh, shortcut for that here. You don't have to use this, of course. This is just convenience for me. We're creating a stage, 500 by 500, you see here. Should be big enough, I think one layer and we're adding that to our stage right here and we're all set okay now because we're dealing with the mouse right we're assuming the user has a mouse and this is a desktop environment there are three events we're concerned with of course mouse down right mouse move right and of course uh, mouse up kind of in this order by the way so when the mouse down event is fired, we want to begin, begin to draw. We want to begin drawing a new, let's say, rectangle arbitrarily. And when the mouse is up, we want, when the mouse up event fires, we want to stop drawing the rectangle. And on the mouse move event, we want to adjust the width and height accordingly if we are now in the middle, if we're sort of between the mouse down and the mouse up. If we're not, if the mouse up has already fired and the mouse down is not fired again yet, then we don't want to do anything. Okay, that's probably clear as mud, but this should become clear as we get into it. So first, my friends, let's create a couple of sort of global, uh, in this case, they're going to be global. They shouldn't really be global. Global variables are poison. And anyway, uh, we're going to say let rect equal null. There we go. Okay, and we're going to create outside of anything, outside of everything else, we're going to create a variable called rect, which will hold our reference. The reason we're doing this is we're going to reference this rect, which is going to be a conva rect, of course, in both the mouse down and also in the mouse move. You'll see what I mean in a second. And then finally, we're going to say let is now drawing, and we're going to set that equal to false. That's going to tell us if we are now in the process of drawing a new rectangle. Okay, so what are we going to do? Let's come down and do the mouse down hand handler business. If we're mousing down, right, if we're mouse downing, is that a verb? The first thing we're going to do is set is now drawing and true. If we're mouse downing, then we're beginning the drawing process. Okay, now what do we want to do? Let's say rect, okay? Notice there's no let or var or const on this because we instantiated rect up here, right? We're going to set that rect equal, of course, to a new conva.rect instance. There we go. Now the x and the y, what are we going to set the x and the y to? Well, we're going to set the x and the y to wherever the pointer, which is to say the cursor, you know, the mouse, the clicky event, right, happens to be right now. There are multiple ways we could do this. One way, my friends, is to look at the event itself, which gets passed in here. And you could just call this e or event or something, and you can log it out, and you can find from here where the pointer is at this moment, okay? There is, however, another and arguably more universal way of getting it, and that goes like this. Stage dot get, get pointer position. Now stage get pointer position, and this, my friends, this is kind of the magic, the magic sauce, okay, in this video. This stage dot get pointer position method returns to us a little object with xy values, xy uh, properties in here of where it is now, where the, the pointer, the, the cursor is now. We want the x value for that, okay? For the y, we're going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to copy and paste and adjust that to y and y like that. With, the, <clears throat> it should be zero, but for now I'm going to set it to 20 and this is just going to be 
for testing purposes, my friend. We're going to set fill arbitrarily, light blue, stroke to make it easier to see, of straight vanilla blue, and then of course we need to do our boilerplate. We're going to add layer dot add rect, of course, and then we need to draw, or better yet, batch draw, which is slightly more performant, at least in other cases it would be. Now, let's test this out, my friends. Let's test this out. If we have done this right, then anytime we mouse down, we should get a new rectangle, which is just actually a square 20 by 20 on our stage here. So let's come over here and click, and it worked. <laughs> wow. I'm really actually kind of surprised that, that worked. Usually it would take a couple of iterations for me to get this right, okay? Rarely do things go right for me on the first time. Okay, but these are 20 by 20 now. We don't want to start with that sort of arbitrary width. So I'm going to come in here and set the width and height to zero. Now let it be, let it, let it be uh, understood that we could, we don't have to specify width and height to zero, zero. Of course, we can just eliminate them entirely. It's not necessary. I choose to leave them in because I want readers of my code to know that I am willingly setting these to zero, zero. Okay, great, wonderful. What happens when we mouse up? What happens when we let up on that mouse button, right? The, we want to do one thing, my friends. Is now drawing equal false, equals false, and that's it. That's all we do. That's all we do. Now, that's fine. Now, my friends, we're ready to talk about this mouse move handler business. Now, here's, here's, where the, here's where the real magic sauce comes in. Is that a term, magic sauce? Special sauce. Special sauce. Okay. First of all, if we are not now drawing, if we are not now drawing, we're not going to do anything, okay? This mouse move handler is going to get called whether we're drawing or not, and if we're sort of, you know, if we're not actually drawing in the middle of drawing a rectangle, then we're simply going to return false. Anything beyond this point, and yes, we are drawing, okay? Sound good? So what do we want to do? Well, we're drawing, we're dealing with a rectangle, so we want to adjust the width and height of that rectangle. So let's do const new width equals what? Well, we want to get, right, uh, the pointer position of the pointer, <laughs> the x position of the pointer, and we're going to subtract from that the rect.x value. Does that make sense? The new height of the rectangle is going to be exactly the same, except, of course, dealing with the height, we're going to deal with the y and not the x properties, OK? Now we're going to say rect.width, new width, of course, right? And we can chain these together. Height and new height, is that right? OK. And then, of course, layer, and I spelled that wrong, layer, batch draw, there we go. Why is there a 9 in there? OK, that's great, wonderful. And here, my friends, this batch draw business is important because the mouse move handler is fired much more often, like really, like orders of magnitude more often than the screen could ever possibly uh, um, uh, refresh itself. So we want to make sure we call batch draw, otherwise we really will have take a performance hit. So now, my friends, if that has worked and we have saved this, is that right? We have saved it. Okay, now we come in here and I, it's not going to work. These things never work the first time. Holy shit, look at that. Did I just swear? Oh my god, language. There we go. It does indeed seem to work. We are now drawing rectangles, my friends. Yay! It might be more interesting to vary the background colors of these rectangles, but all right. Okay, that's wonderful. This probably has answered the viewer's question, and so you could stop right here. But you know what? What if we want circles? What if we want circles? Oh my god, there's, a, there's an interesting question. Let's do circles. Let's do circles, my friends. Let's change it to circles. I'm going to say that we're going to change all of those rects. Is that right? Rectangles. And we're going to change all of the rectangles to circle. I've already done this, haven't I? There we go. OK, change rect to circle. And now when we draw a circle, we're going to draw a new circle. X, Y are going to be the same. It's not going to have a width and height, of course. We're going to have a radius for a circle. OK, that's great. Wonderful. And again, we're going to say 10. And we're going to test this out for a second. Hold on, I'm going to comment 
this mouse move business all out right here. And now, my friends, now when we click, we, there we do. We get, we get circles instead of rectangles. And this, is just, this is kind of pretty. I like this. Very cool. Okay. But now let's come back here, my friends. And in the mouse move handler, what do we want to do? We want to adjust the radius of the circle, let's say. This line here is the same. If we're not currently drawing, then don't do squat. Okay. So instead of calculating new width and new height, we want to get the sort of the, the, the distance, right, between the, the, the mouse pointer position and the center of the circle. And that will be the radius, the new radius that we're going to do. Little bit, tiny bit, my friends, tiny bit of math, okay? Now, if you're like me, I'm not a math person. I'm really not. I mean, I, re I genuinely had to go to the internet and find out how to do this. I kind of knew, but I wanted to refresh my memory and make sure I didn't screw up. So let's see if I don't screw up this time. Now, we need the rise and the run of the two. I'm going to say const rise, which is, of course, the y coordinate, equal. And here we want, my friends, we want the uh, stage get pointer position of the y. Is that right? OK. Uh, minus the circle dot y. OK, great, wonderful. That's the sort of the distance, right? And for the run, for the run of this, my friends, we're going to say const run, and that's going to be the same of x and x. Now, what did I just do? There we go. Okay. Uh, and now the thing is that we need the power of 2. We need this times itself, don't we? Math. Well, i got to do the capital. 2. There we go. And I'm going to do the same down here. Math, Jesus. Okay, so to get to calculate uh, the distance between these two points, right, we're going to say const new radius, and here we're going to get the square root of rise plus run, run. And I don't know, I have absolutely zero confidence I've actually done this right, but we can say circle radius and set that equal to the new radius. And if I've done that right, and then that should work. And let's come over here and holy shit, it does work. And I just swore again because, oh my God, look at this business. This really does, okay, this is kind of what we want. Now the user can draw all sorts of things with the mouse and everybody's happy, and that's not quite as pretty as it was a moment ago because they're all grotesque. In fact, this looks really quite grotesque. In fact, let's try something crazy. Here we go. Oh my god, that's just nasty. That, my friends, that is nasty. I'm going to erase that. Okay, so that is how you draw shapes using the mouse, and let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.